Hey, this is Zach. I'm Brian of Liberty. So probably coming to you from the Volunteer Choose Network in the compound in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Um, I guess I got to start off with some apologies. Um, you know, already last week I had fucked up and due to poor planning and the fact that it took me forever, like 12 hours or something like that, to render out the video from last week with my fantastic interview with Paul Elam. Uh, that went up late in the day. Uh, I have never been that late for any show ever. And then this week, I fuck up big time. And I, I mean, I'm recording this the day after my show should have gone up. I'm recording this actually literally about 24 hours before I probably should have done my show, or 24 hours after I should have done my show. Uh, a lot of poor planning, a lot of procrastination, um, you know, a lot of lack of sleep too. Uh, I was running up on doing a whole bunch of overnight shifts, uh, which I'm kind of in the middle of doing right now, starting tonight and going for another seven to nine days, depending on, you know, what my need is. Um, uh, I've got no excuse. I mean, I had concerts on the weekend, but I still should have been able to put something up. I should have been able to plan ahead. I knew that I wasn't going to have a guest this week. I, I should have been able to to do something about it, and for that I'm extremely sorry. Uh, I know there's uh, a small audience for myself, and you know, you loyal listeners, you make it worth my time. But yeah, I let you guys down. I let Michael down. I let the network down. I was one of the most consistent, the only one who had never missed my slot ever. And I missed it last week, and then I fuck it up again this week. Uh, so this is going to be extremely late. And again, for that, I am very very sorry. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to make that up to you guys uh, with some great content comparatively. I mean, I don't have a, a blockbuster bomb-busting show. I don't have a Paul Elam. I don't have a John Payne. I don't even have a Michael Shanklin or a Seamus or a Chuck or a Randall on. It's just me this week. So I'm really sorry, guys. I, I should have been better prepared. This is completely my fault, and I'm going to strive to do better. I'm going to strive to <laughs> not fuck up like this again. Um you know, strange scheduling with my work and family, other things aside and stuff like that. I always strive to bring content to the network every single week. Same time every week, same bat channel, same bat time. But I didn't. So, you know, I'm going to make sure I get uh, a video up for you guys next week. We'll try to knock that out early or later on this week, even probably before some of the other shows have done theirs for this week. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I do promise that for the date of Wednesday, November 5th, the day after Election Day, actually. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. I'll give you some analysis of the voting polls here in Cape Toronto. Not really, because I don't give a shit, and I'm not going to be voting in that garbage anyways. So, uh, all that aside, um, I will have a show up for you. 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. Eastern, Central, Eastern Standard Time uh, on October, Wednesday, the 5th. Uh, and if I don't, feel free to come after me with pitchforks and fire and and the state, maybe. I don't know. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, anyways, I really do want to thank, on a positive note, Paul Elam from A Voice for Men. Not only has he generously donated his time, about two hours of his time last week, uh, to sit down and do a great show with me. I mean, it was so much fun. And the stuff that I cut out of that interview, the kind of pre-roll, post-roll type stuff, was just so awesome, so entertaining, that I may just release parts of that, uh, the little before and after scenes. May release that on my personal channel, which you can see in the lower third right down there, youtube.com slash liberate the republic. Uh, so keep that in mind. We will be potentially putting that up here in just maybe a couple of days, maybe a week or two. I don't know. We'll see what I want to cut together. Uh, so big thanks to Paul Elam. He single-handedly created my show to be the most successful of all the shows for the last, you know, week or two. Uh, you know, as far as engagement, as far as engagement, but views definitely has blown everything else out of the water. And I'm not bragging on that for the sake of, you know, oh, look at me, look what I did. I had to pull in a superstar just to get fucking views. Nah, the rest of you guys who are pulling the views organically without having to resort to bringing in a big guy like I did, um, you guys are the real heroes on the channel. Um, but yeah, it's become the single most successful video in my YouTube career that actually has me in it. Uh, my anarcho-communism debunk video on my channel again, youtube.com slash liberate the republic, uh, featured a friend of mine. And then my first channel, back when I was youtube.com slash broadicus, uh, that one was mostly Alex Jones uh, re-uploads and Ron Paul type re-uploads. You know, you got the interviews and such like that. And I was getting 20, 30,000 views a pop, but 
that got shut down. And for more talk on that, uh, refer back to my first video, I think, is when I introduced all that kind of interesting tidbits of info on me. Uh, anyways, if you want to know more about that, my first channel and kind of the history of comments below, and we'll see if I do a show on that or maybe bring somebody in to interview me on some stuff like that. Anyways, uh, it's actually up to over 600 views at this point, and if you haven't watched it yet, I would urge you guys to watch it. Go back, and it's a fun show. Uh, it was so much fun. And it's the most important video yet. And, you know, Paul is somewhat in touch with me on it, but we may be doing uh, a show moving forward uh, very regularly, whether every two months or every month or so. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to lock us into any specific schedule, but it's going to be something that's going to be fun, and I'm going to love every second of it. Uh, so finally, uh, the guys at Libertarian Gaming wanted me to mention that if you are interested, if you are a writer in the Liberty Cause, if you're a gamer and you want to do interviews with game devs and you want to bring content that's more gaming focused or maybe even just the an anarchist libertarian uh, bent type article talk about this social justice bullshit or this statist whatever who cares if it's libertarian or anarchist themed we want you uh, I'm gonna be working on more the the media side of things you know videos and audio and such like that but they need people for articles so please go and message them uh, you can also go to the website libertariangaming.org, uh, and I will get you information. Uh, just check in the description bar below. Uh, we'll have that information up for you. Get in contact with them, uh, especially get in contact with Varus and Stetson. Uh, they'll be able to help you out and get things organized uh, so as to allow you to become a writer. So make sure to check that out. So, all right, got a small list of topics here. Let's see. Whoop. Little printouts. Yay, gotta love having time at work to do stuff. Um, one topic uh, is news. It came out a couple of days ago. I want to say Saturday, Sunday night. Uh, well, it would have been Monday morning because I do overnight Sunday into Mondays. Um, this this thing that I saw on the Monday morning news uh, about Illinois gas. Uh, the next one is kind of an entertainment thing. I was watching the Cleveland show and had a cool little idea for a rant, I think. And, you know, maybe if I have time, I'll have some sort of other rants that I may throw in. We'll see how that all goes. Um, anyways, first topic, Illinois prosecutes gas stations evading sales tax. Uh, this is brand new uh, for, like, what, the 12th time for avoiding taxes and whatnot? You know, good for them. It's out of the AP Chicago. Uh, Illinois officials say a crackdown on gas station owners accused of evading state sales taxes has recovered more than $100 million. Uh, Attorney General Lisa Madigan's office and the Illinois Department of Revenue has been part of a joint ongoing criminal enforcement operation. So far, they say 50 gas station owners across Illinois have been charged. Of those owners, 40 have been convicted and some were imprisoned. State officials say they started the effort to stop some gas station owners who they say were under-reporting revenues to avoid paying taxes to the state. A recently enacted law in Illinois established stronger penalties for businesses and retailers that evade sales tax bills. The law imposes graduated penalties based on the amount of sales taxes evaded. Uh, the thing that was most interesting, when I saw this on the news, now granted this is, I just pulled information from an article, but when I watched this uh, through our local affiliate KFBS 12, a uh, CBS type station, uh, the, the woman on the news basically said that uh, these people, you know, she said something along the lines of, you know, these are your tax dollars that they're siphoning away from you. They are taking your tax dollars. They're taking your money uh, and making a big deal out of it, making, you know, these tax evaders out to be some kind of criminals. But my thought was, now, wait a minute. How can you steal stolen funds? That doesn't quite make sense. Now, for those of you who are watching the Voluntary Virtues Network for the first time, hi, Welcome to voluntarism. Welcome to anarchism. Uh, we believe in no state, or at least a huge majority of us believe in zero state, no governments, no rulers whatsoever. So there's going to be no Barack Obama uh, in the ideal anarchist society. There's going to be no John McCain, not even a Ron Paul, no politician, not a Rand, not a McCain, uh, not a Pelosi, not a John Boehner, uh, not a Lindsey Graham, none of those type of fucks. We're not going to have any of that. And... By virtue of that, there's going to be no taxes. Taxes uh, is theft. Taxation is theft. They are coming to you not in a voluntary way. Like, I'm providing a service to you, and you pay me for it. You know, I say I mow your lawn, and we negotiated out that you're going to pay me 10 bucks an hour for it. Whatever. What kind of, whatever kind of bullshit we come to. Uh, but the state, their revenue comes from taking money from us 
at the point of a gun, quite literally in many, many cases. Uh, you know, you, you try avoiding your taxes for so long, and they'll arrest you. They'll put you in a fucking cage uh, because they're providing you a service that you haven't subscribed to or that you haven't really consented to, that you're not even really using half the time. So that in itself uh, is just disturbing, wrong, and, and all kinds of fucked up. Uh, so first of all, taxation is theft. Secondly, what these people are doing with their underreporting of sales, I think is more heroic than anything else. I mean, Erwin Schiff, Peter Schiff's father, he's a big gold bug, uh, you know, somewhat libertarian kind of. He's more of a, a minarchist, but I won't hold that against him. He's just got great, great concepts when it comes to investment. Uh, but his father is in prison for evading taxes because he no longer consented to the system. He didn't want to deal with all that crap. And, and, and he got thrown in a, in a cage because he's not paying for something that he's not using and that he's not getting a benefit out of. So that is not a bad thing. There is nothing ever wrong with not consenting or using a product that you're not even paying for to begin with. I mean, why not save that money and put it towards something that's actually useful? Uh, so, the reason that I find this so ridiculous is that the local medias are turning these people into criminals or are making these people out to be just completely horrendous bad guys that they're, you know, dealing back in smoky filled rooms. You know, they're, they're these big, angry, you know, ugly, fat pig capitalist type bullshits. You know, they're all in it for the money. It's just the money. Well, when you consider that the, ta the state takes about anywhere from 25 to 45 percent of our wealth. I wonder who really the ones are that are the ones who are so concerned about money. I mean, you know, if a company starts to go under or go on the red, guess what? They liquidate, they go out of business. What does the state do when they get in the red? More loans, print more fucking money. I mean, with the whole, if we're going to go with the status construct, if we're going to go under the whole Keynesian idea, if we're going to under, you know, deal with that whole sphere of things and their bullshit beliefs, you know, why don't we take it to that logical extreme? Why does the state need tax money when they could print their money into oblivion? But wait a minute. Most people understand that that creates inflation. But again, let's just assume that the Keynesian system works. Let's assume that the status system works, that they're actually providing a valuable service, uh, and that it's actually voluntary. Let's assume that money creation isn't going to cause problems. Let's assume that minimum wages actually do help businesses grow and do help the working uh, lower class type citizen. Let's assume that you know the, these welfare programs, all these poverty prevention or poverty wealth, <laughs> you know what I mean. Let's, all these programs actually work. Why is there so much unemployment? Why are the prices going so goddamn high? You know, if it was all hunky dory, if it was all perfect. Why would we even need to bother? But wait a minute. This is the state we're talking about here. They're trying to do every last little fucking grab of power that they can do. Because uh, we're pretty close to no longer being a mixed economy. Uh, a mixed economy being that uh, we have elements of capitalism. Uh, that is that you can essentially freely enter the market in most cases, depending on the licenses and fees that you have to pay. But the state regulates the hell out of it. Because, again, they need to have their hands and mitts into something that is voluntary in between two parties. <sighs> Just the idiocy that comes for this. But when you got local media basically saying that these people are the worst of the worst and, you know, that they're upset that they're stealing money, which is not really the states to begin with, that, you know, even if you could consider that they're embezzling funds from their customers you know, in the way of higher prices than would ever need to be paid, uh, people decided to voluntarily hand over their cash in order to make these transactions. That's a win-win uh, in the world of economics. You know, if I've got a car and you've got $10,000 and you don't give me that $10,000, I'm not going to force my car on you because clearly you value your $10,000 more than, I, than you value my car. And vice versa, if I don't accept your $10,000 for my car, car, that's not how it works. Now, you know, one dollar either way could be the could be the difference where you value that money over my valuation of the car or, you know, that that whole construct. Uh, the only way that these interactions and these trades and these transactions happen is win win negotiation. You know, I went and I purchased this NOS can for my work. Now, granted, I pay a little bit less than what is actually uh, the cost for what we have to purchase them at. 
Um, we charge our guests a little bit higher than guests, you know, one because of convenience, and two because people actually buy it at three bucks a can when you can go up the road and get it for a buck fifty. I paid two dollars for this can. One because I like to support my workplace. Two, I fucking love NOS. And three, I spent the two dollars because I valued that two dollars that two dollars less than that can of NOS. So that is to say that it was a win-win. It's a win because my company got money, and it's a win because I got a product. Really that fucking simple. Uh, so this Illinois prosecuting gas stations for evading sales tax. Ooh, big whoop. Taxes are bullshit and theft anyways. So to be honest, I don't think it's as big of a deal as the status they're making it not to be, and I hope that these people can find a way to get out of it. Um, and hopefully the ones that were imprisoned can find some kind of safety and sanctuary and can get back into the marketplace again uh, with their actually smart market ideas. And this just goes to show that when you allow, when the market is allowed to work in competition with the state, guess what? They tend to be a little bit better at the job that they're doing. So it is what it is. So next in the sort of entertainment side of things, I was watching the Cleveland show. I've been watching it on Netflix with my girlfriend for the last couple of days. Uh, and one episode really kind of stuck with me. Uh, it's called Fat and Wet. Yeah, kind of disturbing the title, but this is from season two, episode six. It originally aired November 21st, 2010, which makes you think, you know, <laughs> that old? Really? Holy crap. Yeah, it just seemed like 10 minutes ago they started up doing the show. Um, so... I'll read you the quick synopsis of the episode, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert, massive spoilers. If you're invested in the series and you have not watched this episode yet, go watch it now. Uh, big time spoiler alert. Now, granted, it's you know, Family Guy spinoff, so you can expect similar kinds of humor. But anyways, uh, so in this episode, uh, I'll just read this whole synopsis as, as written uh, from the Cleveland Show wiki, actually. While Cleveland shows off the new pool he bought, Cleveland Jr. and Kendra sit out high and dry rather than be embarrassed wearing swimsuits. When everyone's attention is focused on Roberta, Rollo hits Cleveland with a football, but he tries to recover it from the pool. Donna panics and orders him away. Junior snoring at night keeps everyone awake until Dr. Fist prescribes a mask to help his breathing. Despite Cleveland's misgiving, uh, Junior wears it at school where he's teased about his weight. While drowning his sorrows over pizza, he's joined by Kendra, and they decide to push to make fat jokes illegal. You can see where this is gonna go, guys. This is just sad. So, while Donna goes out, she asks Cleveland to keep an eye out on Rollo uh, and keep him away from the pool. Rollo promptly falls in and nearly drowns until Cleveland pulls him out. A grateful Rollo tells, uh, wants to tell Donna about Cleveland being a hero, but Cleveland wants to keep it a secret and manages to convince Rollo not to tell Donna. However, Rollo quickly realizes Cleveland's intent and starts blackmailing him. When Cleveland and Lester become laughingstocks because of Junior and Kendra's push for ballot measures, uh, they follow Gus's advice, Gus being the bartender, uh, to get drunk and are filmed deriding the measure after voting against it, hurting Kendra and Junior's feelings. Deciding it wasn't just their families but the entire town that was against them, uh, they head off to the promised fat land of Wisconsin, which that was just a funny segment, to be honest. Go and check it out. It's, I mean, it's a really good episode overall. Meanwhile, Rollo pushes Cleveland too far and starts dunking him in the pool until he agrees to stop the blackmail. Uh, you know, for the peaceful parenting side of me, eh, it is what it is, but hey, it's comedy. You know, what do you expect? Reaching Wisconsin, Junior and Kendra engorge them until they can't take any more. At, the, at that moment, uh, Cleveland and Lester arrive to take them home, Lester reminding Kendra that he is the best she can get. <laughs> uh, when Cleveland points out that being fat is a choice to Junior, Junior points out, out that to Cleveland and then Cleveland's world is broken. <laughs> so, all right. One of the things that struck me pretty well with this episode is the fact that so many people are so reliant on the state to get their way. I mean, I know you guys see it too. You see it with all these uh, these gay ballot measures and all this stuff for, you know, we need to make sure that all businesses can cater to black people or white people or, or gay people or Asians or whatever. You know, there can't be any discrimination in the market. You know, none at all. You know, we can't have this baker over here not saying he's going to make a cake for a gay wedding. We can't, can't have this ranch uh, who is more so dedicated to family values and Christianity for whatever that's worth. Uh, you, know, you can't have, you know, we can't have people discriminating or using their own businesses and their own plots of land and their own capital for their own uses and be discriminatory that way. You know, God, we can't have that. Next thing we're going to have ballot measures that say that homeless people 
Uh, we can't, you know, discriminate against homeless people or people with no credit uh, or people who are terrible with their money or drug dealers or whatever. Uh, so it's all ridiculous. And this episode just shows that in a nice little nutshell. You know, you got Junior and Kendra, both of which are morbidly obese, uh, Kendra being more so, I uh, mean that she's a big old, big, big, huge hillbilly white woman uh, who rides around on one of those Walmart-style scooters, which is just comical. I mean, she's a funny-as-hell character. Love her to death. Um, but, you know, they, they rely upon Papa State to go ahead and, you know, do what they want to do and prevent people from, you know, offending them and prevent people from discriminating against them because of their weight. And, and when Cleveland pointed out at the end of the episode that being fat is a choice, it makes you really think. I mean, half the time, you know, people are fat because they eat and they don't exercise. You know, yes, there are some legitimate medical reasons for some people being fat. That's, uh, you know, one out of every thousand or two thousand or something like that. It's a ridiculously no low number. But the rest of us, myself included, we've made the choices we've made to get ourselves to be fat. Now, granted, I didn't initially make the choice because I shredded, I, you know, I shredded most of the muscles in my ankle uh, in a story I can tell another day. But my choosing to, after rehab, not continue exercising and not continue doing the things that I should be doing uh, to keep myself healthy, that's all entirely my choice. Now, I would actually recommend that you guys check out a show that was done, I want to say really, really early on, about obesity and the liberty movement. Uh, I'll put the link in the description bar below. I don't remember where it was or when it was. Uh, I'll go and find that for you to get more of an insight on, on obesity, the state and, and anarchism. Uh, so we'll, we'll dig into that another day, but this episode really just encapsulated the whole ideals of the, the status system, the status mindset. Oh, we just need to pass a law. Because, you know, that works out so well. And when so many people voted it down, uh, and now in the context of the show, the people who voted it down would be considered assholes. Because, you know, they're not looking out for the fat people, but the fat people should be looking out for themselves. We shouldn't have all these zero-tolerance measures of, uh, you know, anything that resembles a gun or a knife, you know, biting a Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun or writing a story that involves guns. You know, that'll get you kicked out of school. Uh, people running around and, you know, yelling at cops and screaming at cops, they get gunned down, that sort of thing. It's this kind of zero-tolerance mentality and this over-the-top just paranoia that has had that people think we need to pass a law about it. I had somebody who checked into my hotel uh, who, you know, rejoiced that we're a non-smoking property uh, and said that, you know, all hotels and all restaurants uh, should be non-smoking. We should pass a law for that. And I'm thinking, I said, well, no. No, there shouldn't be a law. There should be rules at each establishment, and they can choose to cater their, their company to whoever. And then you as the consumer just needs to be smart in picking where you want to go. You know, look, I don't smoke. You know, I used to smoke a few cigars every once in a while and, you know, other substances um, back in the past. But... I have never smoked cigarettes, and it's it's just awful to me. As a vocal performance major, uh, well, an on-hold major of sorts, and someone who's involved in music in choirs and has been involved in operas for many, many years, you know, smoking is horrendous to me. But are you going to find me telling Joe Blow up the street that he can't smoke at his favorite whiskey joint or that he can't go to Applebee's and smoke or that he can't, you know, go to the park or anywhere outside and smoke? Obviously, you shouldn't smoke at a hospital, but property rights. It's all about the property rights. You know, if if I if in the context of this show, you know, I went over to this this woman Kendra's house and I told her, you know, she was fat and I was belittling her because she was fat. And I was making all kinds of snide comments and she didn't like that. She could kick me off her land. And guess what? I wouldn't be able to do a goddamn thing about it if I respected her property rights I would walk away so in in a free market system in a in an anarchist society you know all of these problems of of bullying of uh, I mean all these problems of bullying and all that sort of thing they wouldn't go away they would still happen because people are fucking assholes but it would be much better contained and be easier to do more social ostracism against the people who are the assholes when we actually adhere to private property and that, that's just the big message I want to take 
want you guys to take away from this. Uh, business owners doing what they want to do on their own property shouldn't be a crime. It shouldn't be a crime that they took taxpayer funds because, you know, it's probably their money to begin with anyways. It shouldn't be against the law to, you know, make fun of fat people or gays or, or trannies, whoever. I don't give a shit. You know, look, don't hurt people. Follow the non-aggression principle. Don't be a fucking asshole. But if you're going to be an asshole, be ready to face the consequences. And if you're someone who thinks you're going to be, you know, in the targeting range of an asshole, either get out of that targeting range, stay away from those people, or assert your property rights in on your property and other uh, properties that you are privy to uh, as far as the ownership goes. You know, for example, at my workplace, I can prevent people from checking in if I think they're going to be a problem. I can kick people out for damn near any reason. Uh, we don't have to have a reason for not accepting somebody into our hotel. You know, we can be discriminatory if we want. We can say, I don't want this black person here, or I don't want that Asian person here, or I don't want this white trash person in, in the hotel either. We have literally zero legal reason to take anybody in the hotel. But guess what? We take in all sorts of people because that's the best business practice. And we ban people who disobey our rules. And we've had people who have done everything from meth and pot to simply smoking a cigarette or trashing a room completely. We've banned people for all of that. Did we get the law involved? Well, in the case of the meth and the cocaine and that kind of stuff, our hands were kind of tied, and I wasn't even involved with it that day. You know, they had to call the state in to you know, haul the guy out. Uh, and But otherwise, we have full powers to do what we need to do, and I think that's a great business model uh, to be able to discriminate against people however you see fit. Uh, you know, whether it's good discrimination or bullshit discrimination, you know, let the market sort you out. So that's kind of the big overarching message I want to send today. We don't need the state for anything. We don't need the state to come after us for our taxes. We don't need the state uh, to pass laws because we're offended and especially not because we're offended. And this increased feminist movement in the last, you know, several weeks, uh, especially around Gamergate and the new Emma Watson speech that she did, what, a month ago or so? You know, this just goes to show the people running to daddy state because they're scared, they have problems or things like that. This goes to show how fucked up our world is and how, you know, through peaceful parenting and through, you know, logic and reason and evidence, we can come to a more peaceful society where these things aren't necessary. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, well, let me check my list of thanks. To, why did I throw it on the ground? Uh, again, big thanks to Paul Elib for the show last week. I will plan on bringing him on upcoming. Uh, I am extremely sorry that this episode has come up as late as it has. Uh, I will work to rectify that issue in the future. I don't plan on having this kind of problem ever again. Uh, so again, really, really sorry, guys. Make sure to check out Randall's Crypto Coin, uh, Coin Pros Crypto Hour, which was last night, two nights ago, depending on when this goes up. Uh, Wednesday. It was on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday the 29th. Uh, so I'll think of it that way. Check out Seamus. So Christian Archie, I have no idea when that's on. I just watch it every week. I don't remember the time it goes up. Uh, so check that out. I'll put that in the description below. Make sure to check out Chuck, the Liberty Geek Show. Uh, that happens every single Friday at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I don't remember. Uh, but again, that'll be in the description bar below. It's an awesome show, awesome time. And also make sure to check out libertariangaming.org. I've become very good friends with Varys, one of the heads there, as well as Stetson, who both of which have been <coughs> either on my show or through Chuck's show. Uh, so make sure you check them out. Great organization. Join us on the team speak. It's a whole lot of fun. A lot of shit. <coughs> anarchist shenanigans. Um, make sure also check out YouTube.com. So I've the Republic. I've got a lot of good back content from, I've got a Mises quote of the day series. I've got a tyranny spotlight series back when I was kind of in between anarchism and, uh, minarchism, uh, all kinds of fun content. So make sure to check that out. And please, for the love of God, give me ideas in the description bar below what you want to see for content. I don't want to have to keep you know, writing up little scripts and little ideas uh, on my overnight shifts right before I'm going to record stuff uh, when I can have people give me guests and ideas and, and all kinds of other fun stuff like that. So please, for the love of God, tell me what you want. I can't be a good host if I don't know what you fuckers want. And I say that lovingly when I say fuckers. Uh, so check that all out. Like if like the video, if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. And make sure to subscribe to the Voluntary Virtues Adam Broad of Liberty Republic I from the Voluntary Virtues Network. Peace and love and liberty. And 
Let's go spread some anarchy. Bye-bye.